Donald Trump lashes out. He's threatening more legal action over the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago as the DOJ faces a major deadline over the affidavit used to justify the search. To flip or not to flip, the Trump allies facing their own legal trouble and growing pressure to turn on the former guy. And Mitch McConnell's moment of truth. He admits Republicans may not win the Senate due to candidate quality. In other words, folks like this. I've never really felt it was society's responsibility uh, to take care of other people's children. At one time, science said man came from apes. If that is true, why are there still apes? Yeah, Mitch, you should be worried. I'm Michael Steele in for my friend Jonathan Capehart, and this is The Sunday Show. This Sunday, Donald Trump is still trying to play the victim after the FBI search of his home at Mar-a-Lago. He's threatening to file a major motion soon pertaining to the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unusual search and seizures. Meanwhile, a federal judge has given the DOJ until Thursday to submit proposed redactions for the affidavit used to authorize the FBI search. The Trump team is also considering releasing surveillance video of the search, but the DOJ is concerned about the safety of agents whose faces may be visible. And Trump's allies have a new explanation for why he had classified White House documents at Mar-a-Lago. He was just keeping them safe. Now, they want to make him responsible for having taken classified documents and preserved them. Really, if you look at the Espionage Act, it's not really about taking the documents. It's about destroying them or hiding them or uh, giving them to the enemy. Right. It's not about taking them and putting them in a place that's roughly as safe as they were in in the first place. Joining me now, Charles Coleman, a former Brooklyn prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst, and Jill Weinbanks, former assistant Watergate special prosecutor, author of The Watergate Girl and MSNBC contributor. Welcome to you both. So, Charles, let's just get into this. We're now hearing this talk that Trump is considering asking for a special master. So, you know, he wants this so that they can review what happened at Mar-a-Lago. Mar so let's be honest. I don't think Trump understands the difference between a special master and a master of ceremonies, <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Tell us what this means and why would his team be considering asking for one? Well, Michael, the notion of asking for a special master in a case like this is to try and ensure that impartiality rules the day. At least that's what the narrative is publicly in the court of law. The truth is that Donald Trump is far more concerned about the court of public opinion. And because of that, that is why they are already injecting this notion of trying to appeal for a special master for review in this case. It's not necessary, but it does help to bolster this narrative that you continue to hear from the Trump camp around the DOJ and the FBI having been politicized and weaponized against them. And so it's really an attempt to continue to control the narrative so that the public sides with Donald Trump, even though statistically it's showing that the public wants these investigations to continue. But Donald Trump is trying to control the narrative here. Just in case the outcome isn't something that he likes, he will be able to point to the notion of impartiality or rather partiality against him and say that the game was rigged from the start. We know that that is not true. However, this is another drop in that bucket in terms of Donald Trump trying to sort of manipulate the pieces on the board in that way against the legal system, which is slowly closing in on so, so it, this idea of manipulating uh, the, the narrative and controlling it, you know, it makes all of this kind of feel a little bit upside down backwards for me. Why is Trump world pushing to release the affidavit and, and the DOJ is objecting to it? So, so do you think those Trump allies know something that we don't? No, I don't think that they know anything that you don't or that all of the American people don't know. It is a question of trying to seize the narrative, not reality. He wants to release the affidavit, but he didn't go to court to do it. His lawyers were there and sat silent. It's all part of how they do this. They try to get their their version of events out first. And then it's hard to change first impressions. Um, and Charles is right. This is all part of trying to seize a narrative saying, oh, it's not impartial. There is already probably a team in place 
to review these documents for any possible privilege, which seem highly unlikely since these are documents that were removed from the White House. They are documents that belong to America. They do not belong to Donald Trump, so they can't be attorney-client privilege. They are not um, but it also is true that there have been, there was a special master, at least in one case involving Trump, and that was when Michael Cohn's offices were uh, searched. And documents that could be attorney client privilege, not just between Michael Cohn and Donald Trump, but between Michael Cohn and other clients, were reviewed by Judge Barbara Jones, a retired federal judge who was appointed as a master. The only problem with it here is that there are so many documents, and if you have one person reviewing them, obviously it's going to take longer than if you have a team in place to do the review. So maybe you need multiple special masters so that it does not cause an undue delay in reviewing the documents. So, so Charles, I want to play some sound uh, from Trump's lawyers uh, on Fox News. Uh, so you have Trump has been publicly saying to release the affidavit, release the affidavit, you know, but his lawyers haven't done any of the paperwork that's going to actually make that happen. So take a listen to her explanation. I understand that you chose to do that, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, are you not concerned that because you didn't join any of these motions for, again, the full release of this affidavit that you're then waiving possible objections to the way redactions are being done by the Justice Department later on. We would maintain that we haven't waived our right and that that, that still is maintained. Uh, you know, we need to wait and see. I, I can't be certain at this point because we haven't seen the affidavit and we certainly haven't seen the redactions and how it's going to play out. Charles, uh, <laughs> How do we understand? We, I don't know. What, I haven't seen any paper affidavit. What affidavit? What, what's going on? Well, Donald Trump is the lion and his attorneys are the lamb in this case. And he, in many respects, he's the one publicly yelling about trying to get this out because it plays to his base and it plays to the public perception that he wants transparency. His lawyers, however, as lawyers often do, know the truth in a different story. And they know that there may be something in that affidavit that does not look favorable for their client and actually could hurt him in the court of public opinion. And so they're not as, as, as you know, they're a little bit more gun shy in terms of how they want to approach this conversation around putting this out there and getting this information and making it public. Number one, they know that it's likely that the judge, even as the judge has already indicated that he is going to likely release some of the information on the affidavit, it is going to be heavily redacted by DOJ in order to protect information around the investigation. They are aware of that. They know that that's likely going to happen. But more so, the, the, the information that gave them probable cause, and that's that's very important, Michael, to understand. You would not have gotten this search warrant were it not for the presence of mm -hmm. probable cause. That information would be contained in the affidavit, and that getting out there could be very, very damaging to President Trump, former President Trump. And I think that's why their lawyers are a little bit more hesitant, a little bit more cautious in pushing for the release of that information from the affidavit, because they know there's going to be something in there that has some teeth, and they want to avoid it.